I'm a 3D pen artist and today I'll be making an adjacent mask with my 3D pen. But this isn't my 3D pen, this is aluminum foil, not aluminum foil. Aluminum. This is because I'll be using the aluminum foil to make the shape for the mask instead of a template. I folded it a couple times and stuck it on my face to get a mold. Once that was done, it was time to make the frame, but before this, I sprayed it with some deodorant which helps filament stick to things better. But this didn't work and I realized the filament could stick to the shiny part of the aluminum so I just flipped it around. To actually make the frame, I began filling in the mold with very thin lines of filament. This is because I didn't want to make the mask too thick and too heavy. I decided slow and steady was the best option. Once the first set of lines were filled in, I went across in the opposite direction. Then I did that again. Once I had a thin frame, I used a lighter to heat the filament so I could bend the mask into the proper shape. This is easier to do when it's just a frame and not completely filled in. Once I was happy, I filled in the frame. Also during this time, I realized the mask at its current state was way too large so I didn't fill it in all the way. To make an outline for the mask, I ended up using this paint pen, which didn't really work at all, as you can see. But before I use the soldering iron to cut out the template, I had to remove the aluminum foil base. My soldering iron here wasn't really hot enough to melt the filament, so I struggled. But the hotter you go, the more smoke it is, and I really didn't want to breathe in a bunch of smoke. Yeah, I wasn't wearing a mask this time. I was so confident that I poked the eyes in without measuring and I totally won't have to fix that later. Yeah, I messed up badly and I tried to fix it by layering more filament on top of it. In my head, my thought process was that it only looks bad right now because there's not enough filament on it, so I added more filament on it. and it still didn't look good. In the end, I made Rick from Rick and Morty and it was horrible. But at this point, I was still in denial and decided once I smoothed it out, it would look better. And that again didn't work, so I decided to completely remove the nose. and burnt myself in the process. Who would have thought that hot filament is hot? I ran out of space on my phone while recording, but I basically redid everything. I lowered the eyes, filled the nose, changed the shape of the mask, and gave it a curve. Then I went back again and layered the filament to make the details like the under of the eye and some dents in the mask. I also made the nose again, but it's incredibly small, so I had to fix that later, which you'll see. Since my pen was out, I also filled in all of these gaps, and I never had to do this again, which is cool. I decided to use my soldering iron to smooth out the small details, because the clover mini iron will remove too much filament. And it looks horrible, but stay with me, stay with me, you'll see the thumbnail. I had another opportunity to stop and fix it, but I was still delusional and told myself if I put holes in it, everything would be fine. That was a lie. I realized my problem was the mask was just too flat and had zero depth. So to fix this, my only solution was to build that filament around the chin, cheeks, and forehead. So when I smoothed it out, it would create the depth that I'm looking for. 
Also, this time around, I made the nose comically large because the last one was too small. So I had to melt it down a bit, and to do this, I'll be using my Clover Mini Iron. When I'm smoothing out the filament that I added, I'm trying to blend both sides together. I don't want the bump to be incredibly high, I want it to be faded and to look more natural. The filament I'm using here is clearer, and that's because I'm pretty much out of filament, and I only use this filament for special projects, so I have a lot of it. Then, on top of everything else, to make the mask blend together more, I use the grinder. This was also perfect for getting the nose to be the right shape, but I decided to make a triangle and add the notches later. You can see how the mask looks so much better before adding anything else. Since I added the holes in the eyes before measuring everything is off, so I had to fill in these holes and make new ones. Could I have saved myself some time by measuring first? Maybe, but that isn't fun and I prefer to mess up and waste my precious time fixing it. And to make sure I left no gaps, I had to fill in every hole one by one on both sides. I also made the nostrils I talked about earlier, and I must say this nose turned out amazing. Before I smooth out the mask for the unteamed time, I take a break and had a diet coat. Now, back to work, I had to smooth over all the holes I covered up and blend in the nostrils to the nose. And I mean, come on, this turned out so good. And I did send this again, but I don't want to edit that because it's easier to say that I did it. And guess what I have? A tape measure. I know. Who would have thought? This time around, I had to push way harder, and I think it's because the extra layer of filament and the sanding. I cleaned up the excess filament, and it was time to make the drop holders, I guess. You know what I mean. These are really simple and pretty much squares, except for the top one. All of these got smoothed out and blended into the mask. And for the bulb, I just let the filament run smooth out and pressed it down into a circle. Once my mask was done, then I could ruin it. Ruin it? Well, if you were going to do that, why did it need to be perfect in the first place? That's because you'll never learn if you take the easy route. I just added some cuts, dents, and scrapes wherever I thought would look cool. I especially roughed up the nose because it's the center point of the face and where everyone is going to look. Then, I got a great idea to add teeth to the mask as if it was ripped off. Making this was incredibly difficult, but I think the end result is pretty good. Once the mask was done and I was happy, I needed to add padding so I didn't scrape my face. To do this, I have this elastic band. I also really like how the band covered up the hole so you can't see through the mask anymore. Now it's time to paint, and I completely forgot to add the straps on, but we can pretend that I did it on purpose so I didn't get paint on them. Now, I don't know much about painting, but I do know a little bit about layering colors, so I started light and went dark. I started with this beige and brushed on darker and darker browns. I painted all the tears red. And I painted all the teeth yellow. Then I took a sponge and dark brown paint and went over all the holes. Since the mask still had a lot of white spots, I did a black wash, which is basically when you take black paint and water, mix it up, put it on whatever you're painting, and take majority of it off. Then I used the same brown paint as before and made lines underneath the holes. And finally, the last painting step was to add the red triangles on the mask, which I didn't make perfect on purpose. While the paint was still wet, I went over everything in Mod Podge to further blend in all the colors. Once it dried, it looked like this and I was incredibly happy. Now for the drops, I ran out of super glue so I just melted some scrap pieces of filament to the elastic band and blended that into the mask. This turned out super sturdy. The mask turned out like this, and if you go back to see how it looked before, you'll be amazed. So don't quit art. All art is learning.
It also fits my face perfectly. Bye.